Here to help us break things down one day after the enrollment deadline passed is John Graham, senior fellow at the National Center for Policy An Analysis, a nonprofit, nonpartisan public policy research organization. Sir, thanks for being with us. So a lot of people have signed up, possibly hitting uh, the Obama administration's target even. But the key question is, who are these people? So the law targeted the country's 48 million uninsured. And I just want to bring up this poll. According to a poll conducted by the Kaiser Family Foundation in mid-March, 50% will remain uninsured. 40% will obtain insurance, while the remaining 10% weren't sure. So what does this say about the initial success of the health care law? I, I think it says we're at the end of the beginning, I think, as Winston Churchill would have said, <laughs> and there's still a lot of questions hanging out there. I think, uh, as you pointed out, who are these people who are signing up? Uh, the administration, with about a three-week time lag, tells us who they are. They have to get that data from insurers. Uh, what looks to me, although there was a, a kind of a rush of younger people last week and over the weekend, I think overall of the people who have enrolled these 7 million or so, maybe 25% are in that 20-something age bracket, but as your network has pointed out, they needed about 40% in that age bracket. That's going to be a problem for insurers when they start seeing the medical claims. So, Second question. Sorry, please. No, no, go ahead, Mr. Graham. The second one is how many of these folks were previously uninsured. Uh, as I've looked at the data, I think maybe 10 or 20 percent were previously uninsured. And the rest of them are people who either dropped or got canceled or lost their policies for some other reason during 2013. Uh, so if those are the people who are getting the Obamacare plans and the exchanges, that doesn't really solve the problem that we were trying to solve. All right, so let's talk about why that makeup matters so much. Is it going to impact premiums and how soon might we see that? Yes, I, well, we'll see it in 2015. It, it, when we get to the second half of 2014, the insurers operating in the exchanges are going to go to the state insurance regulators and say these are the premiums we want for 2015. And that's going to depend on the medical claims that they saw in 2014. And if it's a, you know, a bunch of 50-year-olds like me <laughs> who are signing up in the exchanges and not a bunch of 20-somethings, obviously the medical claims are going to be higher than they had expected. Right. And we've heard from insurers they're going to be asking some of them uh, double rate increases in 2015. WellPoint came out on the record and said, we know we're going to be asking for a, a double-digit minimum increase. So, but it is the first year. Can this view, year really be viewed as sort of an experimental year for young people to sort of see, uh, you know, whether they will sign up, and, and therefore a yeah. little difficult to judge whether this will affect premiums in 2016, for example. Well, maybe, but again, I'm kind of concerned. You know, we've seen on your network and and, and other outlets, we see people being kind of uh, lining up at the last minute. Mm. Uh, are we even sure these folks have attached checks to pay the premiums to the applications that mm. they filled out? And as they, we, we also know that in the uh, networks, the insurers have much narrower networks than they have in the in the old market that used to exist in 2013. So as people uh, start learning, for example, in Los Angeles County, there's not one insurer who's in the California Exchange who's got Cedar sinai Hospital, which is, you know, the top hospital in L.A., uh, is in the network. So as people learn this, I, I think there's a risk that they'll get more disappointed in what they've actually paid for. And, and, and then the question also remains, how confident can people feel, um, those that have signed up, that they will be billed properly for premiums, oh. given all the so-called back-end problems that have been reported? Yeah, and I think they've admitted, you know, they fixed the front end. I mean, you can now, as a customer, quote unquote, get on there and kind of figure out what you're doing. But, uh, you know, although March 31st was the deadline, uh, it was kind of a soft deadline. Uh, last week they said, well, if you tried to apply by March 31st, you can click a button at healthcare.gov and say, you know, I, I did as much as I could before March 31st, but I haven't quite finished it yet. So that, that fuzziness is going to hurt at the back end. And they're, they're quite honest at the back end uh, that we don't see where the health, uh, the state insurance regulators and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the IRS and mm -hmm. the insurers are communicating with each other. They have not got that figured out yet. John Graham, Senior Fellow at the National Center for Policy Analysis. Sir, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you.